Hello, my name is Tridar, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman Domus in Minecraft. Let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is the exterior tour. As you can see, your main entrance here has a nice classical pediment on the front of it. A few ornamental trees, and it is, of course, very long, as is traditional for the Roman Domus design. There are a few windows I have added on this, but we have some incised arches along the walls. And of course, nothing along the back here. But if we go over our roof, we can see that we do have a nice secluded garden area. A small atrium down there. And of course, we're back to the front of our house. It's rather unremarkable and sort of a drab on the exterior. But uh, this is in keeping with Roman design because they would spend all of their money on the interior and not really too much on the exterior. So let's actually uh, take a look inside and we will do sort of a historical tour of our Roman house. Of course, the entranceway here is called the Ostium. That is, uh, that's this doorway here. So if we go through that, we will come into another area called the Vestibulum, which is uh, rather cognate to the English word of vestibule, I think. So we have a nice, uh, fine, uh, barrel vaulted area here for our doorway. Just a little entrance, vestibule, or rather a vest vestibulum, as the Latin goes. But immediately adjoining that, as you can see, we have a nice, uh, spacious atrium. That's what this area is called. It's called an atrium. And of course, in the middle of our atrium, we have to have an impluvium, which is just a little uh, pool of water that is suitable for, uh, this is actually where they would collect rainwater that would come through the house. So we saw this little square entrance hole here that's open to the sky. This is called the compluvium because it is, it is sort of uh, where it collects the water for the impluvium down here. So we have the, the compluvium there and the, the impluvium below here. Just a little peaceful pool of water for you to sit around and relax. Of course, as you can see, we do have a number of uh, rooms that adjoin the atrium. And this uh, is, of course, because this is sort of the central hallway of our house. So we will take our time and go around this so you can see everything. So let's take a look in this first room here. Now, this design is symmetrical, by the way, meaning that uh, this room over here is identical to this one over here. And we can see that we have a, a nice double barrel vault in here, and uh, these rooms are generally called the Tabernae. And I have um, I have blocked them off, sort of, because in, in Roman times, uh, this would adjoin the street directly. You wouldn't have the pediment that I've added or the trees. This would adjoin the, no the noisy street. This would be a doorway. And that is because uh, this area would uh, actually also be walled off from the rest of the house because it would be a shop where uh, people would uh, set up, you know, set up their wares, sell things, and it's called a, a tabernet. That's why our crafting bench is here. To illustrate that, but uh, these are rooms that you can use for various crafting things because I have modified the design of the Roman Domus to be more useful in Minecraft. So we had to make a few changes, but it's mostly historical, uh, historically accurate as far as the general uh, floor plan goes. So in here we have uh, smaller rooms. Uh, these are called the cubiculums, which uh, that's, that's a very good name for a, a Minecraft room, a cubiculum, seeing, seeing as how it is all made of cubes. Uh, but these would generally be bedrooms. In Roman times, there would be a number of these. Two are included in your house here. If we go into this room over here, we have a triclinium. And uh, the, the, the triclinium's in Roman times, this is roughly the, the Roman's dining room. So here we have uh, some bread. So this is where you would sit down and enjoy a meal in your Roman triclinium. Of course, in, in later centuries, this moved to the back of the house, it to the uh, Excedra, which we will take a look at in due course. So of, course, uh, of course, in uh, keeping with the uh, Roman tradition and styles, we have our fine quartz Corinthian columns in the house. Uh, in here, we have a uh, just one room that connects sort of a it's a, it's a large hallway, uh, but it's more than that. This is called the uh, tablinium, and this is because, as you can see, I have a throne chair sitting here. 
And it's called the Tiblinium because this is where the master of the house would sit and attend to all of his business. And so in keeping with that, there is a nice uh, diamond throne chair here for you to use since uh, you will be the particular master of this house. And of course, as we go through the house, please note the fine mosaic floors we have in our house, made up, of course, of the glazed terracotta blocks. On the walls, we have a red Roman color scheme with uh, done in the first style with uh, the with some fine imperial Roman marble here represented by the nether quartz ore. I always like this block. I always thought it represented uh, Roman imperial marble. So that is indeed what we are using it for in our house. And the color scheme in general is rather uh, blue, white, and red. But uh, we do have some, some green and, and black. And a little wood mixed in here and there to round out the design. So if we continue through our house, we come to the large uh, colonnaded garden at the back of the house. And this thing is called the peristylum, uh, meaning it's a, it's a peristyle hall, because that is the design here of the columns. It's called a peristyle. If we uh, move into our garden here, we can see we have a nice central fountain, and this is called the piscina. Now, not all Roman domus uh, or domiciles would have these, but I have added this here in Minecraft for a little decoration. But there are a number of ways you can get around this. We do have a little ambulatory where we can walk around. Several uh, entrances here for you to walk around and enjoy your little farm, uh, formal garden here at the back. And at the very end of the house, we have a, a last area here. This is called the Exedra. I'm guessing it's called that because it's, it's like referring to the extra bit at the back. But remember, I said in later years, uh, the dining room or the triclinium that was over there, this would be moved back here because this is sort of like uh, the living room of the house or of the uh, den, however you want to say, where everybody would sort of uh, gather in a large space and enjoy the gardens and relax in the evening. Uh, back here, I've also chosen to, this is the spot for your nether portal. So we have a nice and large nether portal here. And off to the side, there are a couple of more uh, smaller rooms. These are called uh, Culina. I believe in Roman times, these were the kitchen area. I think this is the root word for, for culinary, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, but there are a couple of very small rooms uh, back here at the back. Generally, the Culina or uh, where these arches here are on the side of the garden. They would have more rooms going off in this direction, um, but I wanted to keep the house as a nice rectangle, so I ditched the Kalina on the side so we could have a larger garden here in the middle. Oh, just another change I've made there. And of course you can see we have a nice uh, fine red mosaic floor here on the back made of both uh, black and uh, red glazed terracotta. And a fine ceiling up here as well. Uh, one of the designs of the Roman uh, Domus, before I get out of here, by the way, is you can see all the way from the back to the very front. There's a straight shot that goes through the house from the back to the front. You don't hit your throne chair. As you can see here, we can see all the way to our nether portal there at the back. We have a straight line of sight all the way through our house. One of the key features of a Roman Domus so hopefully you have enjoyed the tour of the Roman Domus and you will choose to build one yourself so you can live just like the ancient Romans did. Alright, now it's time to talk about the materials list. So if you choose to build this structure, let's see what you're going to need for it. So you will be needing 756 blocks of diorite, 228 blocks of grass, 13,709 blocks of cobble, Although maybe about half that much, if you uh, don't fill in the roof, I think. Uh, some water, 65 oak tree trunks, 268 leaves of any kind, 516 cobblestone slabs, 47 stone brick slabs, 1,011 nether brick slabs, 82 quartz slabs, lots of torches, 32 obsidian, 2 diamond blocks for your throne chair, 254 cobblestone stairs, 58 blocks of netherrack for a garden mulch, 
70 blocks of light blue stained glass and 80 block, I mean 80 light blue stained glass panes. 1,576 stone bricks, 298 stone brick stairs, 641 nether quartz ore or imperial Roman marble. 1,267 quartz blocks, 451 chiseled quartz blocks, 185 pillared quartz blocks with the lines on them. 574 quartz stairs, 17 dark oak doors, 12 large ferns, 2,775 blocks of red nether brick uh, for the walls, but primarily also for the roof. 24 blocks of light blue glazed terracotta. 25 blocks of cyan glazed terracotta. 1,580 blocks of blue glazed terracotta. 97 blocks of red glazed terracotta. And 526 blocks of black glazed terracotta. So we are now using five kinds of glazed terracotta in the building. Of course, if we go, if you don't like the color scheme and the, and the materials that I have used, uh, feel free to uh, make modifications if you have another type of glazed terracotta or some other block or color scheme you would like to put on your floors and walls. Uh, do feel free to make changes to the design that I will be showing to you here. So the dimensions of the building are as follows. It is 37 blocks wide that way. 84 blocks long back that way, and 24 blocks tall all the way to the Necrotarion on the top of the pediment there. So not too bad. So to get started, you want to make a uh, 37 by 84 rectangle, and uh, you want to do that with the uh, cobblestone stairs here. So as I go, I'm going to be using this red wool here as a laser pointer, sort of. And uh, these dimensions, this includes the stairs here, by the way, the 37 by 84. That is the rectangle of these cobblestone stairs all the way around the building, like you see. And uh, let's start at the front, I think. So now this building has a center line, as most Roman structures do. So we have our center line here. So as we go, as, as I said, this building is symmetrical on both sides of the center line. So if you build something like this on that side of the center line there, you want to build something like that on the other side of the center line there. So as we go, I'm going to be focusing on half of this building, but recognize you just uh, draw your center line and mirror everything on the other side. And also as we go, the first two phases are both one and two blocks, but after that we will be going in uh, two block slice increments to sort of 3D print the building from the ground up. So that is the format of the tutorial. All right, now over here, let's uh, build our little garden bed. It's gonna be the, this, uh, this little garden bed here. And you are doing that with uh, how many blocks? One, two, three, four, five, six blocks of grass. And then I think those are gonna be five blocks wide. So you put out your ring of grass, you fill it in with a nether rack mulch, and I'll leave a little block of dirt here for your tree that you're going to be using here with your uh, oak tree trunks, or whichever kind of tree trunk you want to use. Uh, let's uh, establish the middle of the building. So from this point right here at the front, you want to count back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks you get to here and then place down some quartz right here so your doorway is going to be here and you want to place a two by th three of quartz as you see now behind that you will be using your black and blue glazed terracotta in a checkerboard pattern uh, the orientation of these should be random and I should say um, uh, the way to get this random is that when you place down a block of glazed terracotta, just turn either clockwise or counterclockwise, and it will uh, change the position of the glazed terracotta. So as you go, just sort of, uh, you know, twist around and randomly place them and throw them down, and you will get a random pattern. And all the terracotta in this building is random, by the way. Uh, but if you want to, you can, um, you can, if you place them all in, let me just illustrate that. If you place them all like this way, then turn a quarter turn 
then another one, then a quarter turn, and then another one. It will give you a pattern like this. Uh, but if you place one this way and turn the other direction, like that, uh, you will get a different pattern out of your glazed terracotta. And there are a number of these patterns that you can use. So as we, as we go, if you want to make a substitution here and make a pattern floor with a solid color of glazed terracotta, you are free to do so. Uh, but that's not included in the reference model. It's just a little bit of extra. So now the floors here. So I think um, in order to get these all correct, I should go around and count them out, I think. So back from the center line, from this point here where our doorway is, you want to count an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 blocks. And then on the 15th block right here, you want to make uh, out of the chiseled quartz the uh, impluvium, a little central water feature. And the height that I listed in the building, that includes uh, this block down here, by the way. It's, it's measured not, for, not from here, but from down here, because this is the lowest level uh, from to the top, by the way. So uh, don't let that throw you. And over here, as you can see, uh, let me just zoom out for those of you that are visual builders, like myself, and show you from the top down the floor patterns that you should be constructing. And I think from this, uh, because of the checkerboard patterns, they're, they're fairly easy to count out. The places where we have the white quartz, these are your doorways into the room. So we have our smaller room up here, the cubiculum. And over here, the floor pattern for the triclinium. And then back here, the larger pattern for the, the uh, peristyle courtyard. As you see here, we do have the central fountain here in the middle. As you see, done with chiseled quartz and just uh, one pillar quartz block in the middle there. And back here at the back for the Exedra at the back. As you see here with the red and your nether portal at the back here. And counting from the back, there's a one, one, two, three, four blocks here along the center line from your nether portal there. So take your time and get all of the patterns correct. Uh, they aren't very big, so I don't think I need to go around and laboriously count them out. Just give you long, slow views, and of course the video tutorial is designed for you to pause and visually replicate what you see on your screen. And at the end here, let me zoom out and give you the entire thing from the top down there, in case that's more useful. And along the sides here, this should be another four blocks, along the side there for all of that. All right, so once you have all of your floors fully placed in and established, I'm, I'm sure that's going to take a little while to do. Uh, but once you do, it's going to be a lot easier because as you can see, we can now go along and place all of the walls. And we're going to be doing that uh, on the interior with baseboards of solid quartz blocks. But let's land here at the front and start taking a look. So around where you had the grass for this little garden uh, at the front, our, our little formal tree garden, just put a ring of hedges like that there. And then along our center line, right here on either side of that, you want to put a cross of cobblestone skip three blocks and place one more. And these are the foundations for the columns on the front of our pediment there. So here at our uh, ostium, this is our uh, doorway. We are placing down uh, some oak tree trunks, as you see here. The uh, bit of diorite on either side for a door frame. 
And I think for the exterior, let me do some counting here. So uh, you, you know where this block is. So count five blocks of stone bricks, and then do a five block run of diorite, then another five block run of stone bricks, and then another space for the doorway. And as you can see, it's an alternating uh, pushing forward and pulling back of five blocks. So five, 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 there you go. On the sides here, I believe that's going to be four blocks. Right here, four blocks. And then you want to do a run of five blocks of diorite, and then three blocks of stone bricks, five blocks of diorite, three blocks of stone bricks, and so on and so forth. Keep repeating that pattern of three to five and three to five, all the way until you get to the back corner, where you will do one more three here, and then another five, and then a five here, and a five, and so on and so forth, because this matches the front, and uh, here is our center line here from the front. All right, so let me just zo sort of zoom in and go along and show you the top down of this from the back to the front. And we will take a look at it in more detail in a moment. All right, now for the interior, now that you've established your exterior walls, we can go along and all these places where in the middle here where there's all this cobblestone, you want to just directly on top of that place baseboards of full quartz blocks like you see here. So they shouldn't overlap any of your floors as you see done here. More quartz along through there for our cubiculum and our triclinium. And back here also for the peristyle, we are doing the foundations for our columns. And we have uh, your lowest part of your throne chair here. And each quadrant of this is this built. This uh, section can be separated out into four quadrants. So this quadrant here, you just want to look at this and uh, build what you see. Of course, we have chiseled quartz for the foundations for the lowest part of our columns here. Full quartz blocks there. Our central fountain here. And the bit back here for our Exedra. And as you can see, we have a bit of our nether portal back here. All right, I don't think that was too difficult. Uh, at this point also, you can go ahead and fill in with water your impluvium in the middle here of your atrium. And let us go to the next phase. So from this point onwards, we will be going up in two block slices, meaning that each slice I show you is going to be two blocks taller than the previous slice. So over here you have the oak tree trunks out here for your decorative trees. For the uh, pillars at the front, they're the same design. We just have the diorite and the stone bricks uh, stairs, as you see here, right on top of the crosses of cobblestone that you set down. Behind here, we are now, now that we have our foundations firmly established, we're just going to be extending those up. And here is the design for the doorway, the ostium. You see here, on the side, we have our windows. Now the windows are done in the following way. We have a pane of glass, a full block, and then a pane. And on top of that, we alternate back to a full block, a pane, and a full block. This is going to be a little module. So as we go, each two-block section, you're going to be stacking that again on top of this and another one on top of that. And uh, that is how the windows are done. So my favorite window design to use. Take a look along the sides here. So we have uh, this here. It's pretty much just cobblestone. You're placing that directly on top of your stone bricks. 
two layers of cobblestone and your window and more cobblestone and windows and all of those are exactly the same for uh, four windows I think I think it's four and then beyond that you just uh, wall it straight off with cobblestone as you see done here and also you're walling it off at the back now in some designs the Roman Domus you could have a uh, exterior doorway sort of a little side doorway that you can place somewhere around here if you want another exit from your house uh, but I assume most of you will probably just exit your house with your elytra and rockets just straight up out of the uh, the peristyle here at the back so let's take a look at the interior now so here is just inside the doorway on the vestibulum a design along the walls And here, and uh, looks like the doors are backwards for some reason. Hmm. Um, here is the design of the walls and the doorways. Of course, we have our oak tree trunks on their sides here. We have our four columns here in the middle, around our impluvium. Take a look inside the uh, tablinium. Here is the design for that. Of course, all of our windows, they're just framed out with solid quartz blocks. Every place you have a window, you're going to be framing it out with quartz blocks. And uh, my torches here are just suggestions on where you might choose to place your torches. If you're building this in survival, and I assume many of you are, you're going to need many more torches than that. So that's why there's no number listed for those. So here inside the cubiculum, and here inside the uh, triclinium. I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying using all the Latin terms as we go through here to describe this. That's quite fun. Uh, here is your uh, throne chair, established here right in the middle, um, back here along the peristyle. Let me just uh, show you the design for the walls. It's not difficult. It's just red nether brick and uh, imperial Roman marble alternating with each other here in this pattern. I know some of you may find the color scheme in here to be rather garish, uh, but that is, this is actually faithful to how the ancient Romans would color their houses. They were all very brightly colored because remember they didn't have uh, electric lighting back then or much lighting of any kind. Um, so, the, all of these colors would end up looking much more muted than they do to us. Because all, when all you have is just a little olive oil lamp, and everything is nice and dim, you want uh, all of the bright colors, uh, because they, they, you can still barely just see them. Alright, and here at the Exedra at the back, and the design for the walls in here. All right, I think we're ready to go to a next phase. So uh, for, I'm going to ignore the trees until we get to a completed specimen. And then I'll talk about that in detail. So over here, you want to extend the uh, diorite column drums up. Two additional blocks. Back here, we are doing a little banding detail. For the exterior, we now want to have a band of stone bricks and then straight back to cobble. This is gonna be a rule through the building. For every one layer of stone bricks we place, we're going to be placing two layers of cobble, like that there. And of course, extend your window module up, like I said. The design for the doorway. Let's take a look at the sides around here. You're just uh, doing the banding thing with the cobble and the stone bricks and extending the windows up on the exterior, like you see here, all the way to the back of the building, then turn the corner and uh, add a little bit more. As you see here, of course there's a little waste, uh, wasted space back here with the cobble. Uh, you might try and make this room maybe a little bit bigger if you so choose to do that. Let's go back to the front and take a look at the interior now. So here at the vestibulum again, 
some details of upside down uh, quartz blocks and details of the walls here. The wall design in the atrium. And over the doorway here, we have the upside down stairs as well. To add a little texture, so let's take a look inside the, um, the tabernet on the sides here. Details for the walls. You're just uh, extending this up and alternating the red nether brick and quartz. And your windows and your window frames. You got a little door frame here, as you see. Details inside the cubiculum. Same door frame for all of those. And the triclinium here on the side. And why is that there? There's an extra block of red nether brick for there for some reason. You don't want to be placing that. You see here, now we had to cut the uh, um, the door frame off a little bit. There was just quite, not quite enough room to fit the doors there. And here in the middle of our tablinium, the walls here as well. And back here at the, the uh, peristyle. So you're extending the courts of the columns up and uh, building the walls and everything just straight up as you see done here. Not too difficult, I think. Uh, back here at the Exedra, we have the details for our walls on the sides here and our doorways. And of course, our uh, nether portal is just going straight up at this point. Uh, there are some details behind this of uh, the uh, pattern here at the back. Break the nether portal so you can see that. It's just a checkerboard pattern of uh, quartz ore and red nether brick. And then uh, back here at the uh, culinary spaces. I believe uh, the culina. Simple patterns. Very small room. If you have uh, something small you want to store back there. And I think if you're doing this in survival, you could probably, along the uh, peristyle hill here, you could uh, place your chests along the walls here. It's got a good space for that for your storage system. You could line up the entire thing along both sides of the peristyle. That's probably where I would put it. Or you could also, uh, conversely, put it in your uh, triclinium. In uh, either of those. But I will leave that for you to do. There is going to be some assembly required on the building, of course. And the exact uses of these rooms are entirely up to you. Uh, now, next phase, two more blocks, diorite, column, straight up. As you can see here on the doorway, we kept that off with a lintel of diorite and then some stone bricks. And here we are going to be building our attached arches over our doorway. And these arches are going to follow, they're going to all be made of diorite but they're going to follow this pattern here like that there. This is, the, this is the standard arch size that we will be using throughout the entire house except in a couple of places. All the arches are going to be of that dimension. Over here for our windows we do, do have just a small uh, lintel to cap this off of the, uh, three upside down stone brick stairs. And you want to do that on all four of the windows on the sides here. And where you don't have a window, you don't do it. As you see done here. And a view of the back there. Alright, so the exterior of this building is very simple to do. Let's go on the inside here back to the vestibulum. So we have our doorway. We're going to have a nice little triangular pediment. Over our doorway here, the largest one in the house and details of the walls and on the tops of these at this level we now want to be putting a string course of upside down quartz stairs at this level here as we go so bear that in mind so let me go around the atrium here we can now see, see a completed um, a detail over the doorway this is a, uh, a completed door frame with all of the, the quartz stairs and slabs and the wall patterns here are complete also. 
as you can see. They do get a little uh, collided and smushed together on the sides here. That, that couldn't be helped. Uh, let's go in the Tabernet over here. Take a look at this completed. If you, if you remember from the tour, we do have some arches and barrel vaults in this room. As you see along here. So let's go inside the cubiculum. And inside the triclinium here. And all of the ceilings of this room, except well, in, in all the smaller rooms, they all have barrel vault ceilings. And we do have a little rib vault here inside the tablinium. And of course you're extending the columns in the middle here straight up for a while. Back here also the, the columns, same thing for the peristyle. Let's take a look around the peristyle. Very slowly here from the ground up. as you see here, and then back here for the etc. And let me again break the uh, portal so you can see that there. And here inside the Kalina, at the back here, And I think that that is all for this phase here. So let's continue on, another two blocks. So here we are building the lowest portions of our Corinthian columns, or rather we're putting on our Corinthian capitals, and we're doing that with upside down cobblestone stairs to represent our Canthus leaves. As you see here, the total height of these columns should be six blocks, as you see there. Details for our doorway here. Remember, I traced this archway out for you with uh, the wool over there. And, of course, you're continuing to alternate your stone bricks and your cobblestone on the exterior. Take a look at the windows along the side here. So uh, build one of these, then build three more, and then... Uh, all the way to the back, just arches along the sides there, and three arches at the back. All right, let's go back to the front, take a look inside the vestibulum here. So here's a detail on our completed doorway. Uh, from this point on, pretty much, we're going to be using the blue glazed terracotta for the ceiling. It pairs well with uh, the quartz. Anything blue or black goes very well with quartz, I think. So that is what this looks like here. We do have some arches on the inside forming here at this level. Up here, you can hide some lighting with a, a few more torches. Up here, if you so choose to prevent things from spawning. And you're just doing a straight run of randomly placed blocks of blue glazed terracotta. And also for our columns, they match what we did on the exterior. Port stairs upside down to represent our canthus leaves. And let's take a look at the uh, tablinium while we're over here. We're doing just a very small uh, rib vaulted or uh, groin vaulted space here for the center of our house, just to make it a little bit more special. That's why uh, this color of glazed terracotta is only used here. Remember I said this is a very special part of your house. I mean, it's even got your throne chair and your diamonds in it, so you could, you know it's a special part. Uh, let's go over here in the tabernacle. 
take a look at, let's get the doors out, out of the way. Take a look inside the tabernet. We have a large quartz arch here. And the lowermost portions of our barrel vaults are, are forming beside that here. Of course, we have a central arch here in the middle, a smaller arch, for our other barrel vault on the side here. It would have been simpler to put flat ceilings in all the houses. Uh, the Romans generally did that, but I wanted this house to be a little bit more special. So I went to the extra effort of putting barrel vaults in all of these rooms. So you can have uh, more of a, a modern and upscale Roman domus. Uh, let's take a look at the um, ubiquitums. Ceilings in here. Very simple to do, just a couple of blocks. Over here in the triclinium, same thing, except it's longer. As you see here. All right, let's take a look here uh, at the peristyle. So here at the back, just like you did around the atrium, you're doing the same thing again. Uh, leave space in the middle here because we are forming these arches. And uh, these mirror the arches, uh, not exactly for their placement, but these mirror the design of the arches on the exterior here. As you see, so once you build one of these, then build two more right beside it, as you see done here. And the wall along the back. And we do have another arch back here for our Exedra, as you see done here. Of course, we're going to have, have another uh, rib vault here in the middle as well. We have two of those in the house. And uh, back here for the Kulinae. Not too difficult to do. I think uh, in a phase or two, we're going to be capping off the ceilings in the rooms completely. And I think we can uh, go on to that now. All right, so on the outside here, our Corinthian columns at the front, completing those with their capitals. You want to use uh, stone brick stairs for this one to complete your acanthus leaves. And on top of that, you want to put lentils of cobblestones. As you see done here, they should sit uh, square right on top of your Corinthian columns, as we do. We have to make everything structurally accurate. Here is a completed archway over the doorway. And another one here over the windows. And along the sides here, you can now see the completed archways. And once you build one of those, you want to go all the way to the back of the house, completing as many of these as are there. And of course, the three at the back here. All right, now let's take a look inside the house. We're going to be uh, capping the ceiling off on some of these, and you're doing this with just a, a straight flat run of blue uh, glazed terracotta and the quartz blocks here in the middle. So you can see we now have a, a small, you know, a Minecraft version, but a small completed barrel vault here, which is just a, a, an extended semicircle is all that a barrel vault is. We have our completed Corinthian columns here in the middle around our impluvium in the atrium. And just like you did with the cobblestone, in here you want to take your red nether bricks and make lentils of those and connect them with the uh, columns and the walls, like you see done here. All right, let's take a look at the ceiling here in the tablinium. So this is a uh, rib vaulted structure which uh, all that means is there are two ribs that connect. They just, they just make a little X, as you can see here. That's, that's the secret to making these. You just make a curved space and then draw an X on it. Uh, but as you go, you want to, uh, it's, it's in three-dimensional space, so you want to have your arches, um, or rather your ribs, they, they look like an X when you look at them from the bottom, but they take on shape when you look at them this way. And then put uh, light blue, I mean, uh, just blue 
lays terracotta on top of those to cap off that there. So let's take a look at which now should be the completed tabernet on these sides here. You're just doing this with quartz and blue glazed terracotta, as you see here. So it's the last time we're going to be in this room, so let me give you a good slow look at this so you can see all the parts. And the same design over here as well. And that will be your completed Cabernet. So let's take a look inside the cubiculum. Same deal. And now for the triclinium. Over here for that, as you see, just right there. So this is now all of your rooms finished. And we can now focus uh, on the peristyle back here. So just like you did with the atrium, with the red nether brick, form lentils, connect all your columns, as you see done here, the interior space, where this is going to be four by, by what, by five? On most of those, except for the corners here. Just four by fours on those, then four by five again and so on and so forth. Let me just give you a good top-down view of this entire thing here. So you can see what that looks like. And as we go, I'm filling in all of the uh, spaces around this with just solid cobblestone. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but I generally like to make my building, building solid. So let's take a look around here, around the peristyle from the bottom. So you can see that here, your completed archways on the sides. And the walls at the back. The completed archway for the Exedra. And the rib vault back here for the Exedra. It's done in the same style as the one we did for the Tablinium over here. As you see, just uh, out of quartz, just draw another X. But do that in three dimensions, as you see here. Of course, uh, we have small, very small barrel vaults on the sides of those. And back here for the Kalina, as you see. And I think at this point you can also go ahead and light your nether portal. And here is the completed design for the back of that. All right, next phase. Only a couple more phases to go. We're in the home stretch now. We're going to be putting on the entablature and then the roof. So you should already have the cobblestone built. So just put a band of diorite on top of all of that and just all the way on top of the building, a band of diorite. And then in front of that, a, a cornice of upside down stone brick stairs, as you see done here, all the way around, wrapping around your pediment, like you see here. And underneath here, uh, details, we fill in with just a little bit of diorite and then cap that off with cobble, like that there. And let's take a look along the sides here. So, as I said, you just continue. A straight run of diorite and upside down stone brick stairs all the way to the back. Super easy. And along the back and just wrap it around the entire building. All right, let's go back to the front here. I think there's just a few more things to take a look at on the inside. So inside of our atrium here, you are where you did the, the red nether brick. You want to put uh, chiseled quartz and just squares and rectangles of those. And in the middle of those, you want to put one last little touch of blue glazed terracotta in the middle of the coffers, as you see here. That's what this design is called. It's called a coffered ceiling design whenever you have the squares incised into a roof. And also out here, we have an alternating sequence of uh, 
uh, quartz pillar blocks. Some of them are straight up and others that are on their sides. And you're doing that with the, the, the uh, compluvium right here. And on top of that, put upside down quartz stairs there. As you see, and looks like I forget a little detail. You might want to put another quartz block back there. I mean, nobody will ever see this, probably. Uh, but um, I like to make things uh, complete. So you might want to do that for your reconstruction of this build. So there's, there's that from the top down all the way down to our impluvium at the bottom. And here also at the top for our peristyle. So the same design that you did over there for the coffers in the atrium, you now want to replicate that for the peristyle here at the back. And all these squares, just the chiseled quartz and then the blue glazed terracotta and the tops of those in uh, random orientation. But if you want to, if you want to go to the extra effort, as I've said, feel free to make patterns. All right, back here, now the completed rib vault for the Excedra. As you see here, pretty easy, easy to do. Uh, these get difficult as you make them larger, but at this scale, they're quite easy to do. All right, next phase. Uh, the interior at this point is uh, complete. So we will be focusing now only on the roof. So we got three more phases for that. And uh, let's just take a look at the pediment here at the front. So we have a nice triangular pediment stuck on the front of the building. I did this to make your, your Roman dome. It's a little bit nicer since you probably don't need it to adjoin the street and have uh, shops and houses and everything. Why are there so many donkeys? Never mind. Uh, over here, let's uh, take a look at the corners, as you see here, for the pediment. It is doing this with uh, full blocks and uh, double double slabs of stone bricks, as you see done here, and a little bit more on the inside back there. And diorite filling for uh, that. And for the roof tiles, you are just doing this with uh, another brick slabs and full blocks. Wherever you see the red, these are full blocks of red nether brick, and the slabs are all half slabs of um, nether brick. Uh, I know they look like blackstone, though. That's because that's what they are in my texture pack. On the sides here, we do have some small details for some, uh, just a couple of blocks for diorite to acrotarion to dress up the pediment, and some of those over here on the sides as well. And let me just give you a view here. So we have, um, to make the roof look more interesting, I add these little ribbed elements. The Romans didn't really do that. But in, in Minecraft, they look too plain if I don't do that. So I think it looks cooler, so that's why they've been added. But we do have these little ribbed elements, and they occur at uh, um, fairly regular intervals. So let me just, for this, give you top-down views close in of the roof. And I think just from seeing them, they're not very complicated. You can reproduce them from what you see here. So once you build one of these, you then want to build another one right beside it, and another one, and another one, and keep going with that until you collide with the back. And then what you did up there for the corner at the front, do it also for the back. And then turn the corner, continue the pattern, and add two ribs here in the middle right there. And behind this, as you can see, I have filled this in with solid cobblestone, but if you want to save on your cobblestone bill of materials, you can leave uh, you can leave much of this hollow if you want to. Should save you uh, maybe a few thousand cobblestone at most. Now let's take a look here around the compluvium again. So here is the simple design for that. You already have all of this down here built, so you're just putting the cobblestone half slabs and then the ribbing along the middle and then fill in that with your roof tiles. And of course it's shaped this way because rainwater would fall here and then it would drain down here and uh, fall directly into your impluvium down there below.
All right, and let me also give you the top down. So just like you did for the compluvium over there, you also do for the roof around your peristyle. It's the same design, it's just, it's just uh, bigger. And here is the entire thing from the top down. All right, next to last phase, almost done. Take a look at the pediment here. So uh, you're just continuing this design that you did here. Straight up the building, as we do. Solid diorite behind that. And you're just uh, stacking up your roof tiles with the same pattern behind all of those there. But once you get up to this level, you you should find that your roof tiles will be will be meeting each other. And when you do that, you then want to place in just solid cobblestone here at the top for the ridges of the roof. So let me just go here and give you good close-in views of this so you can repeat the patterns here along the side and towards the back. It gets a little messy over here because the, uh, the roof for the peristyle meets sooner than it does over here for the uh, compluvium. So bear that in mind. And just to um, add a little uh, detail up here at the top, we put uh, half slabs of cobble on top of this for just a little uh, ridging there at the top to make things look a little bit more textured. Uh, but if you have a couple of blocks in your roof, not exactly in the same places, don't worry about it. Uh, the, the roof design up here does get rather messy because it is repeating patterns, but they do tend to collide in various sections, like over here. That section's a little messy, as is this section over here. All right, now let me show you all that from the top down here. And for the last one, I have just sort of rounded up the entire building and gone up of, um, what, three, three, four, five blocks all the way to the end here. Because you built uh, this section of the cobble. And on top of those, you're just placing in the cobblestone half slabs, like you see done here. And here is the ridge in the middle of the house. Um, here is the back of the pediment. We couldn't really round this section off, so we just had a flat wall for that. And over here, the sides and front of your pediment and your diorite acritarium there at the top. Like you see, cobblestone slabs back here towards the back. And also back here, this design is the same, uh, same as in the middle over there, just at the back here. So here is the entire completed roof from the top down, as you see. And once you have done that, your Roman Domus will be complete. So I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Roman Domus. Remember, the entire world, of course, is available in the video description in case you need to come here and take a look at anything close up for yourself. This structure should be suitable for you to use if you just want a self-contained, pre-built Roman-style base. It's got a lot of very sized rooms and features in there for you to make use of. It's historically accurate, except with a few minor modifications, but uh, not all Roman domiciles were exactly the same. They did tend to follow this general plan. Uh, but each one had its own little differences. But I hope you do enjoy building it, and I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.